I get to help a lot of people gather their stock for one reason or another. And every once in a while, I'll run on to an old boy that thinks he's got a pretty good cow dog. Kind of like the doctor was talking about. Now, before I have all the dog lovers in the audience down on me, let me say this. I like dogs, I really do. And I realize that sometimes that a plum good dog can be a valuable asset. But a lot of times them dogs aren't quite as good as what their masters claim they are and they can be a real pain in the neck. This poem is entitled Pretty Good Dog. Jake called last night. He said, come over about daylight and help me gather my cows. Grass is getting dry and prices are high and it's time they's weaned anyhow. So about daybreak, I go over to Jake's and he's down at the barn there sitting on a log. Says we're gonna be shy a couple of guys, but I got a pretty good dog. He's an Australian blue, the kind that you just simply have to admire, the kind that's got guts. And I look, and this mutt's over there a peeing on my tire. <laughs> he said the man that sold him to him told him that he'd take the place of three men working cattle, <laughs> but my hope sort of sank when he jumped in the tank and then shook himself dry on my saddle. But I figured us two just have to make do. And we'd sure give the old dog a chance, so I saddled old Clyde and we started to ride the far back side of the ranch with Blue on our trail, chasing rabbits and quail. He never caught one, I'm sure. And then he gets him a drink out of the creek, and I think now, why'd he roll in that manure? The sun's coming up, and we stop for a cup of coffee from Jake's canteen, and then Blue sniffs at a stump and scares out a skunk, and the air around us suddenly turns green. We jump in the saddle and really skedaddle to try to escape from the smell, and my faith is reinstated that dogs are overrated in the life of a cowboy is hell. The cattle we find in the small bunch of pines, and we chase them all out of the trees, and as they start down the trail, Blue grabs one by the tail and he swings like a kite in the breeze. Well, the cattle stampede and we're riding full speed, but old Blue's there to help save the day and he barks loud and strong. The only thing wrong is he's chasing them all the wrong way. Jake gets mad, cusses him bad, tells him to get out of sight and he whines and he begs and with his tail between his legs, he slips off like a thief in the night. Oh, it was quite an ordeal. And I couldn't help feel a little sorry for that stupid old pup, but I sure hoped he'd stay away for the rest of the day, cause boy, he had really messed up. Jake's over there mumbling, and I hear him grumbling about the shrink he's getting on his cows, but he finally admitted it was his dog that did it, and he should have left him back at the house. Well, we round them up again, we start them towards the pen, and boy, this time they're going just great, but. When they get to the pen, they won't go in cause old Blue's there guarding the gate. <laughs> After an hour of cussing and riding and fussing, why, we finally get them grilled. Then Jake says to me, now you're gonna see what old Blue can really do well. We'll let the cows go their way and the calves will all stay and then with just a little bit of luck, all we have to do is give Blue the cue and he'll put them calves right in the truck. Well, I'm working the gate while the cows separate when this dog decides he wants in on the act and I trip over this mutt and fall on my butt and an old cow runs right up my back. I'm spitting out dirt and there, there, there's a tear in my shirt and my, my eyes bug out like a frog and, and I'm mad, I'll confess, but it's the code of the West. You don't kick another man's dog. <laughs> Jake looked kind of chilled. He said, boy, you could have got killed. <laughs> and with that, I had no dispute. We just tossed them some hay and guessed what they'd weigh and back the truck up to shoot. Jake said, let's go to the house. I think maybe the spouse made some rolls and a fresh pot of brew, and if we get away, they might eat a little hay and put on another pound or two. So after two or three cups, it was time to load up. Jake whistles, and he gives Blue the word, and he barks, and he bites, and the calves flee with fright. And then the crashing of timber is heard. And as they bust through the gate, we watch him escape with a bewildered look you can't comprehend. Then Jake said, I think we both need a drink. Let's, 
let's go have one and toast man's best friend. <laughs> now, someday I'm going to die. And up there in the sky, I know we're going to live high on the hulk. There's just one thing I hope. I don't have to cope with them fellers what's got a pretty good dough. <laughs>